there was no reason to think that Phoebe Waller-Bridge was going to have a good take on Lara Croft and her upcoming Tomb Raider series for Amazon. I mean, there were so many red flags there. You would think that this was a CCP rally, but this was always going to be feminist garbage, especially. It's like, we've seen, we, we've seen the work of Phoebe Waller-Bridge, okay? Whether she's on screen as the insufferable, oh, I'm Helena Shaw tanking the legacy of Indiana Jones. Oh, but hey, she was really good in Fleabag. Oh, some pile of garbage from a decade ago. It's like, you've given how many you've been given how many chances and you've produced a nothing other than regurgitating your shtick time and time again like bro she was in solo the first verifiable money bomb for star wars actually a trendsetter out there i would understand why she would get tapped for future work but amazon we know that they always have the the best of decisions in mind so given her a multi multi-million dollar deal to produce the biggest female icon in gaming's maiden voyage into live action adaptation on a TV show format. It's like, this was always gonna suck. But back in October, okay, I guess, what, a few weeks ago at this point in time, they were holding test screenings and auditions and a veritable who's that was called in order to audition for the role of Lara Croft. And well, they landed on one of the only other larger charisma vacuums in the entire industry and cast her as Lara Croft because we got Sansa Stark out there, Sandra Lannister your Bella Ramsey to take on the titular role of Lara Croft. I mean, okay, she can put on a wig, dye her hair or something like that, you know, put in some colored contacts, that's fine. But bro, Sophie Turner is a drunken loser. She's bad in everything that she's been in, bro. She was Jean Grey, for Christ's sakes, in some of the worst X-Men movies. I mean, how many other people can fail upwards from that doomed series? Like, you got Simon Kinberg coming in and doing this Star Wars. It's so funny how this connection of just names just always o o overlaps with so many other failures. But here we are, I guess. But honestly, like, what role? What role did you see? Like, she was a part of the entirety of Game of Thrones. And I can't tell you one. Well, I could tell you one memorable scene, but it wasn't necessarily a great one from Season 5. Where there was a moment in time where I looked at, you know, Sophie's performance and went... That right there, that is the wise talking, fast cracking, M fatal bombshell. That right there, that is the Middle Ages um, medieval equivalent of Lara Croft right there. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for her to get her big chance to be the next breakout action star. Holy shit, man. But then this also compounds my distaste for Sophie Turner because that was something I'm pretty sure that was earlier this year you know when she filed for divorce from one of the Jonas Brothers and just really showed her colors it's like she's just a really shitty person but to see her get rewarded for this yeah doubly makes me want this project to fall flat on its ass but hey man we already know it will so Sophie Turner is in negotiations to star as Lara Croft in Tomb Raider Prime Video's high profile series adaptation of the video game franchise from Enemy winning Fleabag creator oh my god send this bitch back or yeah back to the kennel Phoebe Waller Bridge, a source tells Deadline. A representative from Amazon MGM Studios declined to comment as we reported exclusively last month. The Game of Thrones alum. Shouldn't that be alumni? There's alumna. One of those uh, new ways to denote somebody. Is that like Latinx? Brother failed. Game of Thrones rejects. Uh, among the actresses who tested for the high-profile role previously played on the big screen by uh, Angelina Jolie and Alicia Vikander. Like, okay, Angelina Jolie was probably perfect casting for the role, even though I don't really think all that highly of Angelina. Alicia Vikander? At least she looked like the rebooted Lara Croft. But nobody remembers that movie coming out. What was that, like 2019 or 2018 or something like that? Uh, but Tomb Raider, uh, which Amazon MGM had Jennifer Sulky. Yes. Well, if anybody has an eye for bland, charismaless bitches, it's definitely a Jennifer Sulky. Called Epic and Globetrotting while announcing the series order in May uh, has been a, a passion project for writer, executive producer, Waller Bridge, who spoke fondly of the title character. Yes, in the time of the pickup. What's your favorite Tomb Raider game? Oh, I love all the Tomb Raiders, but bro, something else bigger at play here. Like, th this, this shit's gonna suck seven ways from Sunday. Like, there's no two ways about this. Sansa Stark couldn't even carry her own house, let alone an entire series. She's gonna look so out of place. I remember, okay, I remember when Gal Gadot got named as, you know, she's gonna be Wonder Woman. It's like, you, that Israeli stick is gonna be, you know, the big hulking Amazonian female Superman? That's kind of crazy, but yeah, she at least put in the work. She put on the muscles, and yeah, there's a lot that uh, the costume can do to fill out the rest of the role, if you know what I mean. But as you can see, uh, with the 
classic Lara Croft get up, there's a couple of things. And if you want to spin it back around, there's about four reasons that I don't think that Sophie Turner can uh, make this work. But of course, this is going to be written by feminist Phoebe Waller Bridge. So it's basically going to be Lara in a burka sitting around eating pie, talking about her feelings. And no, I'm not making allusions to the Netflix animated uh, Tomb Raider that came out not that long ago. Remember that came out? No, nobody does. Like, who voiced Lara Croft that time around? Oh, right, Haley Atwell, who would have been in a thousand times better choice to be the live-action Lara Croft. I think we all seen that Photoshop picture that made the rounds. They gave two good reasons as to why she should be a live-action Lara. But here's another thing that we really need to talk about. What, what good is having uh, Game of Thrones, if you're a main character, on your resume actually produced? Because outside of just simply recycling that old role time and time again, unless, of course, you're Kit Harrington who tries to use, uh, you know, the role of Jon John Snow as a big cope for why his uh, Hollywood career didn't take off. Oh, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna play anymore. A hyper-masculine roles like Jon Snow anymore. I don't want it. Hack. But no, man, just throw this on the bonfire of excuses as to why George is just, oh, he's just too overworked and he's never going to finish the books. Or, or no, no, right, it, it's writer's block. It's not that he's just a fat, lazy sack of shit. He's just out there, you know, uh, convening with uh, Maisie Williams, everybody's favorite Night King Slayer. Yay! Uh, Maisie Williams is uh, potentially returning to the Game of Thrones cre- Oh, with the Game of Thrones creator. Williams spent nearly a decade as Arya Stark on the show that brought in nearly 14 million viewers at its height. Yeah, and pissed off more than that. In the aftermath, while Arya Stark sailed to the west of Westeros, which is Essos, at the end of the series, it was not the end of the universe as a whole. Yeah, we know. It unfortunately continues to trudge on. Uh, there are several more shows in development, Night of the Seven Kingdoms spinoff, which is, yeah, I think just a couple of months away from releasing. That actually looks good. Listen, for as much as I drag George for just being a blubbery mound of wasted potential. You know, the work that he actually does do, it's pretty fantastic. Aegon's Conquest, bro, I can't wait for that shit. That's gonna be great. Like, if they... If the actual plans for doing A Song of Ice and Fire stories is this kind of anthology-style presentation where, yeah, you get four seasons of House of the Dragon, you get this Knight of the Seven Kingdoms adaptation, you want to tell the story of Aegon's Conquest, perhaps you want to, you know, delve into the Blackfire Rebellions, or eventually have this all culminate in Robert's Rebellion and maybe redoing Game of Thrones, who knows, something like that, you know, a boy can dream on that one, but yeah, anything that George can do to avoid finishing Winds of Winter. In a post on his personal and not a blog website, George uh, hinted at a reunion with Williams because everybody could possibly want to follow the exploits, the various dark Yay. While explaining uh, his visit to London in August, he described a meeting with her for a meal. He did not share what the pair discussed, but he could mention that he does uh, believe it may potentially result in something that could be so much fun. Check out his full quote below. Yeah, actually, yeah, we got together with Maisie Williams for pizza and pasta. She had a salad, but I had all the pizza and all the pasta. And talked about, well, uh, no, better not get into that. Do not want to jinx it. It could be so much fun. A cameo in one of those stupid shows, because honestly, bro, Game of Thrones is, is kind of been a death knell for a bunch of people's careers like if you weren't an established star coming in this thing the biggest show on earth for a long period of time has done nothing for anybody and it's not for a lack of trying for a bunch of them because okay cool you see the list of characters that are right there okay you, you got lara croft you got the night king slayer and then you got old king potato right there but honestly bro if you if you run into somebody who has no idea what game of thrones is and for me that was for the longest period of time where i could look at that list that i could look at that picture right there and go i, I don't know is that somebody's edgy family photo like i don't know who any of them are but they were on yeah the biggest show hbo has ever done not even close to being the best because the sopranos and the wire and uh, spartac uh, rome spartacus was hbo right but all of those do exist because you know three and some odd seasons of television doesn't quite make the greatest thing ever but yeah you just run through the list of people that were attached to the show and yeah peter dinklage was a big star heading into the show I don't really think that the show's overall performance really helped him out on that one, especially, yeah, because you take a look at the stuff that he was doing prior to being cast in the show, and yeah, he was an elf, okay, he was in, yeah, Chronicles of Narnia, which is 
Getting a reboot with stupid ass Greta Gerwig. I wonder how much her stock is ultimately going to tumble because, yeah, she's the screenwriter for that upcoming Snow White live action remake with everyone's a favorite pile of garbage, Rachel Zegler. Yeah, uh, I wonder, I wonder how often Greta Gerwig's name is going to get brought up on that one. But anyways, yeah, he was in you know Days of Future Past with uh, Sansa. Uh, he was a giant dwarf in infinity war if you know you know but if you don't don't worry about it and then oh my god he was in ballad of songbirds and snakes with rachel zegler wow he's um i i guess that's pathos for you know kicking the step stool out from underneath the entire uh, uh dwarf acting community and then you got lena Headey, who yeah she was a star heading into this stuff and well it's kind of interesting right because yeah she was a big deal and well Honestly, like, her entire, like, I haven't seen anything that she's done in the aftermath, okay? She's, yeah, she's done a bunch of voice acting stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, she was in the ill-fated, is that the Kevin Smith uh, He-Man reboot? Oof. Our Crystal, Rise of the Teenage Mutant, her, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, is that the bad one? I can't remember. But then, yeah, Jamie Lannister, okay, you know, did, he was honestly, to be completely, yeah, to be completely honest, prior to season eight, probably my favorite character. Probably my favorite, the, discounting. I win, but part of season eight, you know, like that was a that was a bad man right there, and he should have been in a lot of roles, man. Like he has he, he has a lot of talent, but the fact of the matter is, yeah, like he had some pretty decent roles beforehand, and then in the aftermath, um, whole lot of nothing. And then Amelia Clark, honestly, man, like for whatever reason, that's Hollywood's. I was half expecting, right? Like if you would have said, okay, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge taps a Game of Thrones alumni to star as Lara Croft, that would have been the name that would have immediately came to mind because this bitch kills more franchises than bad management. I mean, you know, she's the most powerful creature in all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She's never going to get brought up again. She was, yeah. Terminator Genesis, bro, come with me if you want to live. Oh, thanks. I'd rather die. He was in Star Wars too. Remember that one? The first Star Wars movie to never make money. And honestly, whenever I seen her scenes, when I was doing my watch through of Game of Thrones, I was asking where were her dragons, mostly because I think fire would have been less painful than watching her drag down the better, more accomplished company that she had. Because if it wasn't for the uh, number of talented and well-regarded characters that they, you know, stuck and attached to her, I'm sure she's probably better in the books, but bro, those were the most skippable parts of that entire series. If you take all of Daenerys' stuff out of Game of Thrones, we'd have a much better TV show. Like, yeah, you'd miss out on Khal Drago, most of Jorah's story, but you would save yourself so much cringe. Yeah, she's been given so many opportunities, but none of it's been good, okay? None of it at all. And then, yeah, of course, Jon Snow, what was he? He was in the Eternals, right? And nothing, nothing after that because it sucks, okay? Sophie Turner, I mean, bro. There was a point in time where it's like, yeah, when she was looking like that, pretty good. It's a shame you can't act, but nowadays it's like, oof, God. You're, you're, you're a single mom with, you know, that the problem with all of those broads in Hollywood and they suck out the, what is that? The buccal fat. And she's just what a mess, but yeah, she gets to be Jean Grey. She gets to be the second Jean Grey and she sucks. Maisie Williams. I don't even know what she's done, but bro, we can continue to go down the list, but who has actually ended up succeeding in the aftermath because Bran Stark, I didn't even know the guy's name for Christ's sakes. But yeah. Colin Farrell led space thriller Voyagers in 2021. Oh, Gwendolyn Christie, Captain Phasma. Outside of that, you know, hasn't really done all that much because all of her, all of her roles are about character and actions okay theon Greyjoy. he's probably the most he's probably done the most post game of thrones or maybe during the heyday of game of thrones okay because he's also quite talented yeah, he was in the first john wick uh oh he was in the predator Ooh, sorry to hear about that yeah jojo rabbit the only thing that people who want to defend taika waititi's career will go ahead and bring up and it's like well actually he's not a complete and total hack but let's be completely honest and richard madden it's like why why hasn't he gotten more of a break it just goes to show you man that this game of thrones curse unless you're somebody going in is very real and is very much going to carry over because this right here this could end up being the piece de resistance everything is set in place for this to be a complete and total disaster unfortunately it's going to be a couple of years before we're going to see it on screen and at that point in time if you think all of the shit that's right now getting pushed out by hollywood is out of vogue just wait just wait until 2026 rolls around when that sludge pipe is getting to the real awful stuff it's going to be beautiful to see so with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone